Well, next up, we have another panel um, that's going to be the Aligning Ecosystem and Incentives for Sustainable Outcomes panel with a huge group of panelists. And we're actually waiting to corral some of them in here right now. So until then, I have been told to vamp. Um, I have my joke from last year. Uh, I can do that one first. Uh, let's see. My joke is Tron. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what else can I vamp on? Uh, ETH Denver this year, I think, has been very different because it's virtual, but it's uh, a little bit better that way, too. How many people do we have total, real quick? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're missing two people. So uh, ETH Denver um, is virtual this year. I said that's better in some ways, not better in others. I really miss being virtual this year. I said that's better. Oh. Ahmed, I think you're getting echo. There you go. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Uh, and I, I'm just real excited that we all get to come here together anyway and do stuff like go to the virtual castle and have poker and chess tournaments. It's all really great stuff. How's everyone doing today, panelists? Great. Great. Good. Very well. How many people are on this panel? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing Shira. She uh, looks like having a couple technical difficulties, but here we see if we can get her in. All right. Yeah, we're, we're working on that for sure. Um, and we also have, oh, let's see what's comments in the chat are going. All right, chat, give me some stuff to vamp on. <laughs> I think with the format of this being fairly, you know, round table -y, maybe you guys can uh, take it away until she gets in. Yeah, that sounds good. Y'all take it away. Thank you all so much. Okay, guys, who wants to start? <laughs> um, How are they going? Sure. I mean, um, we we talked about this right before the call, uh, and, uh, mm. and unfortunately, Shira isn't here yet. Uh, but well, we are actually going to be talking uh, about how to incentivize an ecosystem that is decentralized and ensure the sustainability of the ecosystem. And um, uh, we have several views on it. Um, hi, Tegan. Hello. Uh, hi. Oh, uh, I'm not again. the moderator. In fact, I'm just <laughs> acting as the moderator. Um, so uh, let's let's just go around the table, and uh, each of us can share their vision on the, what what. Uh, I'll I'll start. I'll start. Um, so um, I think in terms of what we uh, are currently doing uh, for decentralization, uh, we need to uh, always make sure that the proper people get the proper incentives. And uh, also we need to make sure that decentralization is maintained for the entire lifetime of a platform. Um, I think those are goals and questions that uh, we need to answer together. So my interpretation of what is sustainable is whether uh, a decentralized platform can remain decentralized even after uh, VCs come in, after the money comes in, even the enterprise people come in. Uh, that's what I think. Um, what do you guys think? And, and, um, and Pandu, just one thing: we didn't. We, since we don't have her, give us a second on your background. I think we have to introduce ourselves as well. Yeah. Oh, that's actually that's actually true. Um, because we don't have a moderator, I'm going to introduce yeah. myself. Um, so I'm Pandu. I've been in this space for for several years. Uh, I've started two blockchain consulting companies: Blockchain Zoo and Blocksphere.id. I started an association of 22 blockchain companies, which is the Indonesian Blockchain Association, and. Uh, I started several projects. I'm representing Unique One today. We're sponsoring at Denver. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, what I'm doing in this space. I'm more of a consulting person. I used to work for IBM uh, for about six years, did a lot of enterprise IT. So I came from that side of the space, more towards the tech inside of the crypto. And uh, yeah, so that's me. All right, uh, who wants to go next? Do you, want, do you guys want to do alphabetical? <laughs> Ahmed, maybe? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll go ahead. No problem. Hey, everyone. My name is Ahmed. I'm CEO and co-founder of Bioeconomy. And um, in short, we're making um, Web3 and um, the crypto transactional layer extremely easy um, and simple to use. Excited to be here. 
Alphabetical. Right. Kaz me next. Um, I'm Brian, um, one of the co-founders of Sobol.io, um, and my fascination around this is 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 the the different layers of, of the ecosystems, um, and in particular uh, the organizations and communities that are trying to drive um, change uh, and and looking at organizational behavior um, and organizational structures is really quite fascinating to me. The self-organizing movement um, now, what's happening with DAOs. Uh, all in relation to how do we collaborate to move, um, you know, our mission, vision, or, or uh, uh, outcome forward, and how do we do that in a sustainable way? So, looking at at how we're organizing within our own companies first. All right. I got breaking news, everyone. I am now the moderator because our moderator is having technical difficulties. Uh, so let's keep going around the room and uh, introducing ourselves. Uh, who wants to go next? Um, the Maybe, yeah, maybe. We're, doing, we're doing alphabetical, so it's probably Jesse, right? Oh yeah, alphabetical. That's good. Jesse, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. I'm I'm Jesse. I'm I'm the founder of Variant Fund, which is a, a venture fund that's investing in what I call the ownership economy, which has a lot to do with aligning ecosystem incentives. Um, in 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 a nutshell, the idea of the ownership economy is is that um, the next generation of internet products and services are going to be built, operated, and owned by their users, just like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and and a lot of you know marketplaces and DeFi are are starting to uh, be today, and um, and so in order for the ownership economy thesis to come to fruition, economic incentive alignment is is really key, and that's my interest in what we're discussing today. Go ahead. <laughs> Amazing. My name is Tegan Klein. I am the co-founder of Edge and Node. We are the team behind the Graph Protocol. And we are really working to make open data a public good and make uh, you know, indexing and querying available to every layer of the stack within the decentralized internet, which we call Web3. And my background is in traditional finance. I started in investment banking at Bank of America, moved over to sales and trading at Barclays, helped to launch Orchid, which is a distributed uh, VPN backed by Andreessen and Sequoia. Um, and I've been with uh, the Graph and Edge and Node for the last uh, year. Thanks, Tom. Cool. Um, uh, Tom here. I am co-founder of Fluence Labs, and Fluence Labs is um, an open application platform that I think fits right into this because we're trying to bring in the decentralized, in, bring along incentives to both both the open source community, even larger communities, and we think we can accomplish that by a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer hosting platform where revenue is shared. And prior to Fluence, I helped found Hedera Hashgraph. Um, when that was sort of my initial entree and everything back in, uh, back in, I guess, 16, which feels like, you know, 10 years ago at this point, but, uh, or 17, but, but there we are. All right. Thank you all so much for the introductions. So when we talk about aligning ecosystem incentives, a big thing that just pops up into my head already is like governance and structure of the organizations, organizations that are having to cross collaborate, cross communicate in order to get things done. Cause this is a decentralized world. This is a decentralized uh, community that we have within these blockchain communities. So who wants to speak up and have thoughts on how governance structures are gonna work on that? Pandu. Sure, I'm, I'm thinking more towards uh, the governance related to uh, data sharing. Uh, we need to create something that is more sustainable in terms of the data sharing perspective. Today's big data culture is actually, I think, not very sustainable since it makes companies covet data too much. And then privacy becomes something not desired, especially by companies uh, that has invested a ton of money to create a new platform. And uh, I think that goes against uh, a lot of the things that we are thinking about identity, sovereignty, and all of the uh, things related to your personal data. So. Um, there's, there's, uh, there needs to be uh, a way for governance to maintain uh, uh, the privacy of data from the outset. And I think uh, that should be something that is the crux of all, all of the projects that are going out today. Privacy is a big deal in this space for sure. And something that's very much connected when it comes to this stuff. Um, so what, what else uh, do we got from other panelists? Yeah, Brian, what's up? Yeah, I mean, the governance one's interesting to me. I think, uh, you know, sort of one of the things that seems really important to me is making sure that we, with the governance structures that we're defining, we're making sure to bring all of the participants in, like getting good at mapping all the participants in the ecosystem and bringing them into the governance system so that they are able to provide their unique perspectives um, and, and, and hash out 
uh, so sort of the signal um, from the noise for that larger ecosystem. If only some participants are able to come in um, or the power structures are sort of asymmetric um, relative to the total ecosystem, I think we end up with some serious problems. So I know that sounds like a Captain Obvious, fairly simple thing, but I'm not convinced that that's happening um, all the time. And one that's in particular would be the way in which we're funding things right now. You know, our funders, builders, um, and the ultimate consumers of the things that are being created all on the same canvas or in the same arena governing um, what's happening and making sure that that complex adaptive system is evolving in a healthy way and sustainable way. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think I get what you're saying there. There's like this need for, I guess, diversity of participants in order to get those perspectives, those fresh takes. Uh, what, what, what do other people have to say? Yeah, I'll jump, I'll jump in. Um, one, one lens that I think is, is been helpful to me in thinking about governance in the space is I think it's, um, it's useful to divide the space into two buckets. There are projects that aim to, to minimize governance at all costs and automate as much as possible. And, you know, Bitcoin, of course, is one of those projects where there, there is some governance, but the protocol itself is entirely automated and deterministic. There's nothing, you know, human and subjective happening in Bitcoin consensus. You know, everyone's just racing to solve this really complicated math problem and it's deterministic. Governance happens outside of the, the scope of the protocol. Um, and Ethereum, you know, at layer one today is kind of similar. It's governance by rough consensus. So that's one bucket of projects that try to minimize governance. And you see that at the application layer too, with projects like Uniswap and, and, and others where there's no um, sort of parameters in the protocol that are controlled by governance. It's all sort of automated as much as possible. And then in the second bucket, there's projects that are kind of um, more complicated and they require sort of subjective inputs and kind of human decision-making in order for things to proceed. They can't be totally automated. They're not deterministic. And there, for those kinds of projects, you do need some kind of formal governance system in the protocol for things to keep operating as expected. Um, and, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see a lot of innovation and in how that kind of governance works. But um, I think there's also a lot to learn from the way subjective decisions are made in other kinds of organizations, like from corporate governance or you know political governance, for example, um, because we've had a lot of time as a species to figure out effective ways to make decisions as, as large groups of people, and that's sort of what a lot of these projects need to do. Um, and so, you know, MakerDAO and Compound Governance they have parameters that are controlled by um, by the, the the token holders, um, and there I think like you know some form of um, hierarchical decision-making is likely the most efficient way to get those decisions made, um, but also excited to see innovation on um, now that all that's programmable. Well, I'll, I'll actually jump in there. So I, I think we should be very clear in separating consensus from governance. And so mm -hmm. Ethereum, Bitcoin consensus happens, it's fine, but Ethereum still has governance and Bitcoin still has governance. And you have you know real controversies with how some of those are managed, particularly with Ethereum, not all that long ago. And so I think we, we have to recognize that even we don't like to think and talk about it, the, there's relatively opaque processes with small numbers of people that actually are controlling some of these protocols over time and an on-chain governance um, uh, you know, process, which is employed by some is a whole nother way to do it, which, is, which can be very effective. My, my sort of take on this is it's worth considering the, not, the governance is different for different projects with different ecosystems and different users. And my sort of main thought is that whatever you're doing, you just need to align your users with your governance. And that is very different. And, and it's, you know, I think of Hedera, it's, in, it's governed by enterprise. Guess what? The target market's enterprise. It's not the rest. It's not for the whole community, right? That's a different thing. And if you have a different protocol that has a different type of target audience, then that governance should be and probably is quite different. And so I don't think it's a one size fits all um, and is worth kind of, but but really keeping in mind the alignment of those governors and the actual people. And so if you also think back to like an EOS, just to pick names, are those governance decisions that made by the same right people that they want building and actually using it? Maybe, maybe not, but that's where you start to, you, you, that misalignment, but there's a misalignment, you run into problems. All right, very good take. Um, 
So Tegan and Ahmed, um, as far as aligning ecosystem incentives go, governance, uh, diversity of participation, any anything on any of those topics that you have? I guess on governance, we're still kind of defining the best practices. So I'm excited to kind of see what comes to fruition within the graph. What we've done is kind of had a, a technical council that might then turn into a DAO, but that technical council has 10 folks on it, um, each representing a different piece of the ecosystem. So we have the indexers, which are the node operators, and then we have another piece for the users and the developers that kind of represent that ecosystem, another that represent kind of the backers or the GRT holders, um, the researchers, and then the initial team. Um, and that will likely expand from there, but we're kind of starting small with the governance and then expanding over time. Awesome, Ahmed? Yeah, I mean, I know this is such a heavy topic. I mean, because, I mean, before we talk about like, how do you define ecosystem, how do you define incentives, how do you define like um, sustainability? And so all of these things, you know, coming together is, is quite heavy. Um, but really how I like to see things is more A, from a game theoretical side and then B, from an emotional side, right? Um, because what's great about Bitcoin is that, like Jesse said, it's deterministic and so you know, people have to be honest. Um, and that's what's great about these systems. Like you're forced to be honest. And so the game theory is correct. And I feel game theory is not talked about as much um, 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 anymore as it, as it was a couple of years ago. Um, but also there's the, the emotional side as well. I mean, people are moved by um, and actually, you know, are sort of, you know, um, they, they make actions based on their emotions, which have a particular incentive structure for them and how they think about it. And I think those um, things, although are subjective, also influence a lot on, on how governance is, is really made and how people make decisions as well. Awesome, awesome answers. Um, so we only have about uh, five minutes left, unfortunately, maybe a little bit more than that. So in 30 seconds or less, um, let's go ahead and go through what the ideal state of like a future blockchain platform that has properly aligned incentives uh, would have. Like, what what does the sustainable outcomes look like? Like Ahmed said, what what's that in your mind? Like, what's the perfect uh, s s like place that we could get to that we should be striving for when it comes to sustainable outcomes? Yes, um, I mean the way I think of it is things should be fair things should be um on a merit basis and things should be very cute very clear and communicative as well um and at the end of the day like everyone's on the same you know um on the same level right and like it's interesting i'm, I'm talking to to a few projects and these projects you know um are saying yeah we're, we're not gonna have any employees anymore right like everyone's gonna be on that same level and whoever wants to commit to something they will eventually be automatically rewarded in some way and really like uh, how they're going to get there like <laughs> it's going to be amazing to see but i definitely see that to be sort of a an initial ideal state um as a let's say a version 1.0 as uh, if you were I, I would jump in and say um the the key the key two words minimally extractive um is 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 sort of the ideal or platonic state of a an ecosystem with aligned incentives so Key, key point to make there, a lot of people think, you know, in, in crypto, if you charge any fees at all, you know, you're doing something wrong because everything should be open source, fees should be zero. I don't think that's the case. I think um, fees are tenable so long as they're minimally extractive and the fees are used to route value to where it needs to go to keep the thing running, which could be to development. It could be to the participants of a protocol who are, you know, making the network valuable. Um, so that I'll, I'll leave it at that. Minimally extractive is... Uh, the ideal aligned incentive outcome, I think. Yeah, I think I think that that's that's super interesting. I would I'd add to that. I mean, what um, we're what we're trying to do at Fluence is also grow community pretty large and align economic incentives. So those are two things. So I say that part of what Jesse's saying is alignment. And so if you can make sure that the people who are contribute are actually compensated and fairly. I think that's pretty vital to growing an ecosystem. And I think when you think about ecosystem, you think about a project first, right? Or first a company, then the outside community for that. Then we've got maybe the protocol in which it's built. Then maybe it's the blockchain community we're in right now. And then maybe it's open source developers. And how can we get it even bigger than that, right? We're going from five people to 100 to 10,000 to maybe a couple hundred thousand million to like 40 million open source developers and even bigger. And so I think what we're trying to do is build something that's even bigger 
that aligns those incentives so well um, that it actually grows this co the community even larger and makes it, that's what will make it really self-sustaining over the long term. Right. Other people? I'd like to add to this. Um, one of the things that we're trying to create at Unique One um, is to incentivize the a very process of decentralization. Um, we have a totally fair launch. Uh, it starts uh, with something that is uh, a, well, basically launched by us, the founders, but we're pushing it back to the community. And uh, that's, that's the way uh, we have structured uh, the project itself. But what I'm talking about is more towards basically having the algorithms incentivize decentralization, uh, make sure that uh, a more decentralized uh, platform is uh, better and actually giving uh, giving uh, more kudos or uh, help towards uh, people who want to decentralize the platform. Um, I think that needs to be baked in. Uh, I know there are several projects actually starting to do that. And um, I would say there, there's not, uh, like not all of the problems have been uh, solved yet, uh, but I think uh, if we can manage to do that, then we can uh, have platforms that are more sustainable for like we, we can prevent a lot of the issues with current centralization about uh, current centralized control over data and privacy and everything else, as long as we can maintain a, a decentralized platform in a, in a way that is incentivizable by the technologies itself. Pagan, did you have something? Uh, yeah, I think one thing that we're really kind of undervaluing on this conversation is really community. And I think that community is extremely important and we've kind of seen that. Obviously, token economics are also important, but if you look at like Bitcoin or Doge, it's more so that community. And I think that community needs to be really organic um, and not kind of pay to play like we've seen with some um, projects. And so I would say, you know, community is, is a big piece of kind of aligning incentives for the different stakeholders within the ecosystem. Brian, got any closing thoughts here? Yeah, I, I really want to echo that. I think um, Ed and Tegan are kind of highlighting this, like the, the emotional or like a more intrinsic component and the extrinsic elements of this. And, and I think like I've been a big fan of uh, Eleanor Ostrom's uh, principles around building um, a commons. And I think in the game theoretic that Ahmed was mentioning, uh, we need to honor both of those elements, the emotional um, uh, and, and perhaps uh, uh, the other components, but I think we just want to make sure that we're not defecting on the commons. And so I think that does go in alignment with the things I'm hearing about minimally extractive and making sure rewards are flowing to the right folks. But I think at the end of the day, the goal should be that community that we're lifting up. Awesome. And the final minute of this amazing panel, we're going to go through in an alphabetical order. You get about less than 10 seconds to tell us <laughs> where, where, where people can find you and uh, where you, if you want to show a project. So Ahmed, uh, you go ahead. Sure. So um, quick, quick note about Biconomy. Um, we're basically growing the size of the crypto economy um, by making Web3 experiences very, very simple to use. And we work with many layer two networks such as Matic, which is now Polygon, um, XDAI and, and um, other base layer chains. So hit me up on um, Twitter, Telegram. Happy to chat. All right. Uh, Brian. Yeah, Sobel.io, as in the, um, my name on the screen, but uh, what, what we're working on is a, uh, a visualization tool for uh, a graph of accountabilities. Uh, we need to get sort of transparent and clear of what our organization is are and our accountability structures are, and so we can be API driven, and so we're excited to work with anyone who needs a front end to these accountability graphs in their networks. All right, Jesse. Yep. Um, so variant.fund is the website and we are a venture capital fund that's backing founders at the earliest possible stages, founders building in crypto and the ownership economy. All right. What do we got? Uh, I think it'd be Pandu. Um, it's unique.one, uh, degenics.com and blossphere.id. Uh, one is an art markets, uh, marketplace that is NFT. Degenics.com is decentralized genetics. And uh, Blockspeer ID is my consulting company. All right, Hagen. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you can go to edgenote.com. We're hiring for many different roles. Also, uh, Graph Protocol on Twitter. Uh, if you're new to the Graph ecosystem, I encourage you to use it as it is intended. Uh, delegate in the network to help us secure that network. Um, and thank you so much for hosting this panel. And last but finally, but definitely not least, Tom. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, Fluence.network um, uh, is, is a website. We are a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network that is characterized by rewarding any code, particularly open source authors, by giving a share of hosting revenue to the authors. So whenever any code, any, any applications, anything is used on the Fluence network, some of that hosting revenue flows to the original authors. And network's up, all the language is live, and the blockchain launches this summer. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much to our panelists. Thank you so much for joining us today. And y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Bye.